I am Chrissy Stonebreaker Martinez, and I spend a lot of my time with the Inter-Religious Task Force on Central America and Colombia, and as a representative to the UN for the International Fellowship of Reconciliation and co-chair of the USA affiliate. It's really important to me to make peace the new normal, and I really want to talk about that today. I really want to make sure that we are centering ourselves in... Um, in justice and in grassroots power building and community. So may the God that you know and love call you to support and defend your neighbors. May the spirit of the community help you transform yourself before you seek to transform the world around you. And may you be moved to support Jubilee, total debt relief. May you be moved to support the Red New Deal and Green New Deal. May you be moved to support climate refugees everywhere. May you be moved to support Medicare for all, to support housing as a human right, and to support a God of love. Amen and Ashe. Hi, my name is Manu Savigura and I am a student at Georgia Southern University and I am currently working on my master's in public administrations and nonprofit organizations. I am from Benin in West Africa and today I would like to recite a poem in Batonum, my language. And um, my language is also known as uh, Bariba, uh, that is in French. Uh, but anyway, my poem today is calling for love, unity, and peace in the world. So please, I hope you enjoy it. Mero Bisibu, Boyando, Dayando. Kiru, Tabasinamo. Adama kira don kere. Niki bi atia kro wori doku. Miyama dan teru ta kro sonoko. Wanarun san kira bu yatim mo. Omenna nemmeru bisibu. Ire su naman neno na. Wa dayan do. Wa nemun do. Anduni aso. Nasiya. Thank you. My name is Emma Jordan Simpson, and I am the Executive Director of Fellowship of Reconciliation USA. FOR USA is the U.S. branch of the International Fellowship of Reconciliation. We are people from over 40 countries across the globe, and our work has been about pursuing reconciliation and peace through justice and nonviolence. I'm coming to you today because I want you to consider something with me. The whole world is struggling with a global health crisis that none of us were prepared to meet. We should know just from this experience that we cannot invest for decades in guns and bombs and wars and violence and killing and still have the resources we need to build the kind of public health system to take care of all of our people. The UN General Secretary has issued a call for a global ceasefire. Stop fighting, put down your guns, take care of your people. And countries across the globe have endorsed that call countries except for the United States of America. So this is what I want you to consider with me today. We have to ask ourselves, why would we not support a global call for peace? You have power, you have a voice. Do you have the will to insist on peace? The late theologian Walter Wink said something that continues to inspire me and to inspire my work. 
He said that history belongs to the intercessors, to those who are willing to believe, to pray, to work the future into being. Today, I am praying for, working for, believing the future I want to see into being. I want to see a future of peace. I want to see abundance for all people. I want to see a world without violence, a world without war, a world of justice and liberty for everyone. And I believe that world is possible. I'm praying that we would provoke each other to good work, to create a world of health and safety for everyone. And I'm hoping that you join us in this call to make peace the new normal. Not just in the time that we are struggling with this health crisis, but make peace the new normal. We don't need to take war post-COVID-19. I hope that you'll spend this day, spend this time, spend this season doing whatever you can to make peace the new normal. Do it for yourself. Do it for your community. Do it for the future. Thanks. My name is Andrea Briggs. I live in Riverside, California. I do my peace and justice work as the Minister for Community Engagement at All Saints Episcopal Church. I've been privileged to spend the last two months working from home. It's a peaceful place. There's food on the table to eat. There's clean water for drinking and for bathing. I have a roof over my head and a bed to sleep on. I've been healthy, and if I weren't, I could have a Zoom consultation with my primary care physician. There's email and phone for staying in touch with friends. These are basic human needs. Peacefulness is the birthright of every human being. I look forward to finding my place in making peace the new normal. Peace to you. Together, let us make peace the new normal. My name is Dr. Anthony Nicotera. I'm a professor and social worker. I teach social work, social policy, social justice, multi-faith leadership, and spirituality courses at Seton Hall University and New York University. I also serve as Mission Advancement Advisor with the Fellowship of Reconciliation USA. Contemplating the call to make peace the new normal, I wonder if the new normal we are working to create is really an old idea, an idea as old as love itself. Love that invites us to prioritize people over profits, dignity and justice over indignity and injustice, humanization over dehumanization. An idea that beckons beloved community, that sees the other as sister, brother, self. An idea that reminds us, in the words of Thich Nhat Hanh, that we are here to awaken from our illusion of separateness. In this time of pandemic, let us also remember Mother Teresa's insight that if we do not have peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to one another. In this precious, precarious moment, let us ab absorb with all of our senses the illusion of our separateness. Let us look deeply and know that we belong to one another. And let us embrace together an old idea and make peace the new normal. Greetings. Director of the Center for Jubilee, Reconciliation and Healing on the Coast of Georgia. 
I want peace to be the new normal globally. Now is the time. As we all experience this pandemic that has hit every part of the world, let us reflect on love over hate. Let us reflect on human rights for all people around the world. You see, I'm a soul crafter who believes in caring for people. Let us look for cups of justice for human rights all over the world. I simply have a prayer, a Belagichi affirmation that my ancestors have transferred to me. And I'll share it with you by simply reciting what they would tell us. They would say, in the morning when I rise, I want to rise holy when I rise. In the morning when I rise, I want to rise sanctified. Let us rise to a new sunrise, a new day clean. Let us choose peace for the new normal. And then we can say, peace, be still, be still, be still, a new peace. Hello, I'm Ethan Vesley Flair, Director of National Organizing at the Fellowship of Reconciliation USA. I want to speak to you today about making peace the new normal. I'm speaking to you from Asheville, North Carolina area in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Southern Appalachia. But two months ago, I was living in Accra, Ghana, in West Africa, as part of a year abroad with my family. We were forced to leave our time in Ghana several months early and returned to the United States because of the coronavirus pandemic and the dramatic global health emergency that had come up for people across our earth. In the course of the last two months since we've returned to the United States, the United States has spent approximately $275 billion on military expenditures, current and past military expenses. And at the same time, Gun sales in this country have risen at least 200, if not 400 percent, over previous purchases in the weeks before the pandemic emerged, with a profound amount of guns also being sold to countries across this earth. The amount of money that are being spent on the purposes of war and violence, as opposed to those of public health and peace, are profoundly wrong. A few months earlier, when I was in Ghana, on September 21st, it was the anniversary of the death of Kwame Nkrumah, the immense anti-colonial leader who helped to found the nation of Ghana in 1957. And Nkrumah, the president, had said in one of his writings, as he spoke about Pan-Africanism and human rights, the forces that unite us are intrinsic and greater than the superimposed influence that keep us apart. Nkrumah reminded us that together we come to build a world of peace, justice, human rights, and resistance. And at this time, we need to again come together to make peace the new normal and to to move our money and our resources and our attention and our time from the forces of violence, war, and hurt and pain to those of peace, justice, freedom, and unity. Thanks very much. Thanks for making peace the new normal.